Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlamyTutors.com and welcome to this video on the atom. So in this video we're going to look at the uh, atomic structure. We're also going to look at what the numbers mean in the uh, for each element in the periodic table. Uh, we're going to look at ions and isotopes as well. So uh, we'll start with atomic structure. Uh, now the atom is made up of protons and neutrons in the middle and electrons that spin around in orbitals around the outside of it. So these are also known as subatomic particles because they make up the uh, the actual atom or the structure of the atom. So we'll start with um, just quickly labeling our atom um, and we'll do it in red, I think. So we have these, which are electrons. Uh, and these move around in shells. Uh, normally we call these a uh, quantum, we call it quanta. So they have a fixed energy level. So we call them energy shells. Uh, and obviously uh, in the middle, then we have uh, protons which are in the middle, uh, and we have neutrons as well, so put that there, and obviously these uh, form part of the nucleus, and uh, so the nucleus is the middle part of the atom. Uh, another feature which you um, need to know about the atom as well is about the size of the atom, um, so this is called the atomic radius, so put that on there. Now this would be significant when you do uh, when you do trends or ionization energies, because the um, the bigger the atom, the easier it is to uh, remove an electron from the outer shell because it's further away from the nucleus. So actually, these structures, understanding the structure of the atom is crucial, especially when you are um, doing things like I say, for periodicity. And we'll also need to know, and the exam boards want you to know about the relative mass and relative charge of these. Now, sometimes the exam board can give you exact masses. Um, now these exact masses or charges uh, you don't need to remember but you do need to know the relative masses and relative charges but just beware in the exam if they do give you specific masses and they ask you to calculate the mass of the atom make sure you use their numbers and not the relative ones so again this is just like an exam technique warning I suppose. So we'll start with uh, looking at the proton, the relative mass for proton um, is going to be uh, 1 and we'll do this in green, I think. So the relative mass of a proton is one. Uh, same with the neutron as well. It's exactly the same. They weigh the same. Uh, and the uh, in terms of the mass of the electron, this is uh, normally written as one over one eight forty. Uh, sometimes it can be one over two thousand. You would need to check with your exam board because they have very specific masses. What isn't acceptable though at A level is to just write negligible or zero. So make sure you've written the correct number at the bottom but again check your syllabus to make sure you've got the exact number that they're looking for because this can vary slightly and uh, you can see that actually most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus this is the densest part of the atom and actually the vast majority of the atom is empty space uh, and this was proven using the gold leaf experiment when they fired alpha particles towards it and actually a good chunk of them got through. Um, so this is really important to understand that the vast majority of the atom is actually empty space with a small, very small, dense, uh, positively charged nucleus in the middle. Okay, and uh, the uh, relative charge uh, is the charge of these things. So the proton has a relative charge of plus one. In other words, it's positively charged. The relative charge of a, of a neutron is neutral, so that's how you can remember it, which is zero, so it has no charge, and the relative charge on an electron is minus one, it has a negative charge. These charges are relative to each other, so positive, negative, they're not actual charges, so again, make sure you are looking at the question properly for that one. Okay, so then what we'll do is look at the uh, different components of the periodic table, so you can see here we've got an element, We've got a number at the top and a number at the bottom. And the number at the top, again, we'll write this in, write these labels in red. So the number at the top here, this one is called the atomic, the atomic number, uh, atomic mass number, shall we say it? Put that there, atomic mass number. Uh, and the atomic mass number tells us the number of tells us the number of protons and neutrons. So basically this is the just the mass of the nucleus in the middle. Uh, we then have this one, this is called the proton number. 
Okay, and the proton number, no surprise, tells us about the number of protons. Okay, and to work out the number of neutrons, all you do is you subtract the uh, the top number away from the bottom number, uh, and you should find out the number of neutrons in your atom. Um, okay, so we're just going to look at the uh, number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in this particular example. So the number of protons is just 12 in this case. So we're going to do some green. So this is going to be 12. And the number of neutrons, again, is the uh, bigger number minus the smaller number. In this case, the atomic mass number divided by uh, minus the proton number, which is going to be 12 in this case. Uh, and the number of electrons in an atom uh, equals the number of protons, so it's a neutral atom. This is slightly different for ions, but uh, in this case, the number of electrons is just going to be 12 in this case. Okay, so on to the next part, which are ions. Ions are charged particles. These are basically atoms that have gained or lost electrons to, full a, to form a full electron configuration or full outer shell, or um, in this case, sometimes they can lose all the electrons to get an empty shell, which means the next shell underneath it is full. So uh, we're going to look at sodium. Sodium is in group one. Uh, they form one plus ions. So we're just going to put the uh, positive charge on the top there. So that's Na plus. Calcium is in group two. Um, it uses two electrons to form a full stable outer shell. Uh, it is very rare for calcium just to lose one electron to form a one plus uh, because it's obviously not stable. So uh, the group two Group two elements form two pluses. If we go along to the next next um, group along, which is aluminium, this is in group three, so forms a three plus electron. Again, it's easier for this atom to lose three electrons than it is to gain um, the five electrons that it needs to get a full shell. So it loses, and so what's left behind is a positively charged ion. That's why these have positive charges. Okay, so on the other side of the periodic table then is nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group five. Um, so it has five electrons in its outer shell. Um, the, to get the full stable configuration, it needs to gain three electrons rather than lose five. So because it's gaining three negatively charged electrons, it will form a three minus charge. Uh, oxygen's in group six, it forms two minus charges. And chlorine is in group seven, therefore has seven electrons in the outer shell, just needs to gain one electron to get its full shell of electrons, so form Cl minus signs. So these are uh, pretty important. You've got to make sure you know your, obviously, your ions and where they fit in the groups. Uh, and then just coming on to the last one is isotopes. Now, isotopes are basically the um, element with the same number of uh, protons, but a different number of neutrons. Uh, an example here I'm going to use is carbon. And what I'd like to do is to go through each one of them and just show you how many protons and neutrons we have uh, in these as well. Okay, so. Uh, we're going to start with this one. So this is carbon, protons, neutrons. Uh, so you can see carbon's got six protons in the bottom here. So we're just going to put six on there. Uh, the number of neutrons is six, is 12 minus six, which is also going to be six. So there we go. Okay, so we've got the same number of protons as we do neutrons. So we've gone to the next one. So this is carbon 13, also known as carbon 13. Uh, we have six protons. And the number of neutrons this time is seven. 13 minus six gives us seven. So you can see we've got one extra uh, neutron there, but crucially, same number of protons. The proton is the um, the proton number, this one at the bottom, is unique to carbon. No other elements will have six protons. It's like a barcode for the atom. So uh, wherever you see six protons, it has to be carbon. It might have a different mass number on the top. This is because of a difference in the number of neutrons and nothing else. Okay, and then the last one is, um, again, protons, neutrons. So the number of protons in here, again, is the same. It's an isotope, so we have six protons. And the number of neutrons in this case is 14 minus six, which is going to give us eight. So as you can see, the heaviest isotope here is going to be this one, and this is going to be the lightest. Now, um, carbon in the periodic table, this number here, the atomic mass number, is an average of the isotopes that make them up. So if we take the abundance, the relative abundance of each of these isotopes, and abundance means the amount of them, then we can add them up, and divide them by three, and we can get an average uh, mass. And this is the number that we use here. This is the atomic mass number. So that's why sometimes you see on the periodic table decimals at the end of this number. It might be 24.3 or whatever it is. So these decimals are um, basically derived from the fact that we have 
uh, an average taken from the isotopes that make up that element. So there you go. That's the atom. Make sure you know it. Very, very basic stuff. Bye-bye.